I need to back it up. Um, I always need one of these. Gotta back it up. Oh yeah, that's a good one. I don't want that for later. I always back up your water. We better get that one too. We better back it up. I've been working on a project. Do you want to see my project? Okay, here's my project. See if you can figure out what it's all about. Here's some DOS games. Uh, some of the ones that I played as a kid, a couple that I didn't even. Here's one that's not really a DOS game, but it's kind of made to look like a DOS game. Uh, here's a couple indie games that I've got. Here's a, here's a couple games that I own CDs of. Here's a couple web games. Stop. Did you figure out what the similarities are? It might not be immediately obvious, but I have the right to copy all of these games from one hard drive to another, so long as I'm the only person that uses them. Or do I? That was kind of the question that started my little project in the first place, which was what games can I keep forever? What games do I only have a license to? And how do I as a developer feel about it? Just be aware that everything that I have to say is my opinions. I am not registered to give any advice, legal or otherwise. Um, but I thought that it would be kind of interesting to share my viewpoint, being that I'm not just a consumer of video games, but also a developer and distributor of them. Oh, the games. Oh, Mario Party. Not that one anymore. I need to back them all up. I want to back them all up. Okay, so first off, there is a pretty major difference between categories of games. Pretty clear examples, there's a game like OpenTTD, which has literally open source code. You can download it, you can modify it, do whatever you want with it. Then there's a game like Counter-Strike, which is a free game, but doesn't have an open license. Like Valve still owns the intellectual property and the copyright to Counter-Strike. You can't just go and make a Counter-Strike game and sell that. That would be infringing on their IP. So both of these are good things. Open source games allowed communities to be able to distribute, and modify however they wish um, ad infinitum. And that's obviously, ultimately, the best case scenario for everybody. But intellectual property is very important as well. Uh, if there's no intellectual property protection, then somebody can just copy my game and resell it for a dollar um, and undercut my prices, and I wouldn't be able to make any money. Uh, which means that the only viable way of selling your game would be under a free-to-play model. So that'd mean any indie games that you're playing, Elden Ring, anything on your Switch, would all have to be monetized through microtransactions, advertisements, loot boxes, things along those lines. I don't want to make my friendly neighborhood high heels soap carving game. I just, I just want to make my friendly neighborhood. So the big question on everybody's mind is how far does intellectual property extend? Can I copy my games? Can I make backups of my games? Can I share my games with my friends? I'm going to try to offer what data I can from doing some research on the matter and then kind of give my perspective on these same questions just solely as me, John, a game developer who is currently working on my friendly neighborhood. So because of intellectual property laws, I'm not allowed to copy and distribute somebody else's intellectual property without their permission. So this brings up a couple of immediate questions. First of all, what about a game I already bought? Something that says multiplayer and I want to put that on one of my friend's computers so that we can do a LAN party that day. And second of all, what about games that are not for sale? I don't have a way of accessing them and because of that I'm not really undercutting anybody's prices. Well let me tell you, I have an expert on board and it's the person that I emailed at the at the government copyright office. Yeah, it turns out they just have a form. You can just email them questions. So I was like, okay, I'll email them some questions. Let's see what we got. So I asked in essence, am I allowed to create backup copies of my games? To what extent am I allowed to do that? And does that also apply to like cartridge based video games? Is that the same thing? Okay, so here's what I got back. Dear John Shemansky, a video game is considered an audio visual work. Not software, it's considered an audiovisual work. They gave me a couple links. 
the determination as to whether a particular action or activity violates any of these rights can only be made by a court of law. And then they said you might want to consult an attorney to get your question answered. So besides the fact that the answer to my question was essentially, well, we haven't tried it in court, so we don't really know yet, uh, there was one really important piece of information that you would only find if you actually followed some of the links that were in the article. Okay, so here we are in section 117, which they kind of linked to inside of the email. It says, notwithstanding the provisions of section 106, which, okay, that's copyright stuff, is not an infringement for the owner of a copy of a computer program Think about computer program for a second. To make or authorize the making of another copy or adaptation of that computer program. This is this is talking about backing it up, okay? This is talking about making like an ISO of a computer disk that you own, okay? Uh, provided, one, that such a new copy or adaptation is created as an essential step in the utilization of the computer program. So if you have to do that to use the program in the first place, you're allowed to do that. And two, that such a uh, new copy or adaptation is for archival purposes only, and that all archival copies are destroyed in the event that continued possession of the computer program should cease to be rightful. Oh, 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 and I should also say that uh, under the FAQ on copyright.gov, they talk about this section particularly, and they say that although the precise term used under section 117 is archival copy, not backup copy, these terms today are used interchangeably, which means that you are with in your right to create a backup copy of any computer program that you own. Now, now a backup copy is something that you use, right? You don't distribute this to anybody else. This is something for your own personal use. But that means that you could take the CDs of computer programs that you own, create a copy of those, and put those on your hard drive so that you no longer have to worry about, like, losing your CDs or anything like that. Huge, huge caveat, however, refer back to that email that I got from the copyright office, video games are considered audiovisual works, not computer programs. And that's where this gets super muddy to me. So as far as I can tell, I have the legal right to back up computer programs that I own that are not video games. And when it comes to video game specific computer programs, that hasn't been tested in the court of law. And so we don't know whether we're allowed to make a backup of them or not. This would include, as far as I can tell, this would include CD-ROM games, games that are bought digitally, and furthermore, cartridge games, which I think is kind of like the biggest one for me. I've also seen a video online talking about how there were different times where like these specific laws were put into place, um, pro making backups and then counter making backups. I don't know how well those were researched. I thought I would just mention it. I take it as you will. So I did some extra research and this is essentially the end of the information, which is this is an area that has not been tried in the court of law. But at least there are some things that we can take away from this. First, not all backups are immediately illegal. Second, distributing your backups is probably not legal. I think the only time that I could imagine the law kind of upholding that is if you are distributing a backup to another computer inside of your same network for the sake of that program being played. I don't know if that would really hold up for like say a multiplayer game that you wanted to play with friends. I don't know. It kind of sounds like you'd be on a little bit of shaky ground. And third, this is a question that kind of needs an answer. I have a pretty big retro console collection. I mean, that just comes with the job, right? A lot of the consoles that I own aren't really functional anymore. And it's been really wearing on me that I have this large backlog of games that I would like to be able to play, but I don't really have a legal precedent for, for like dumping those cartridges and playing them on an emulator. Now, now, emulators for sure 100% are legal. It, we're just talking about the software that we're using in emulators, because uh, that the emulators being legal was already tried in court back in like, I think it was the early 2000s because of like Bleem and, oh, there's another one. There's a whole really cool video on the video game historian about the whole thing, I don't know. But I mean, the idea of not being able to like play these games in 10 years because all of my consoles will be dead and I don't have an easy way to repair them, it's kind of, disconcerting. However, I think I have a small solution to the problem. 
Now, before I say anything, this is not a solution to finding better distribution for old games. This is not a, a, a solution to trying these things in court so that we can have, you know, definitive laws on these matters. This is a solution for people like me who have a video game collection of games that they like or have the ability to acquire games that they want to play and just fear that the hardware is not going to be there in 20 years so that they can still play it. You know what I did? I started asking IP owners if I could copy their games to keep for my personal use. Hi, I've got a non-standard question for you. I'm creating a personal library of games I'd like to be able to play without worrying about Steam, hardware, or anything like that. A game, which I will not say, is one of the games I'd like to be able to add to my collection. If I showed proof of owning this game, would I be able to get a version without any Steam APIs or anything included? Essentially a version that I could copy into my library and be able to keep forever. Thank you kindly! I didn't say that. <laughs> I, uh, I added Sega on Twitter because I wanted to ask about the ROMs in the Mega, uh, Mega Drive and Genesis collection. They left me on red. I'm gonna try again. Okay, here <laughs> This is one of the funny ones. I uh, contacted General Mills <laughs> to ask about whether I could get Chex Quest, like the original Chex Quest in my game library, and here, here is what they said to me. Dear Mr. Shemansky, Thank you for taking the time to contact us regarding Chex Quest video gameplay offer. I, did, I didn't offer anything, I don't, I don't know. Chex Quest HD is available for consumers to play for free at Steam Games. They then linked, linked Steam, but uh, Steam in the email is in all caps. It is available for free download only. Okay. <laughs> Step one. Locate code on specifically marked packaging, website, or social media outlets. Wh what? No, you can just download it for free. Launch the game and enter code on the title screen to unlock a character. Codes are case sensitive. But you have a character. I've played through this game before. Play exclusive multiplayer mode and unique checks mixed characters to save Bazoink from the Flemoids! That's step four. I have to save Bazoink from the Flemoids. So some people got back to me, some didn't. I... I might try reaching back to some other people. I mean, nobody's going to convince large companies that they should make their old games available for free. I think we all know that. But I think if we kind of start normalizing this idea of like asking IP owners if we're allowed to continue using their products, that might be a good step to getting to the point where we actually have the ability to use these old products in an accessible manner. Yeah, so that's what my project is. I'm reaching out to people that own games that I want to be able to add into this digital collection and not be hardware dependent. Uh, and just asking them if I can. And I have gotten people coming back saying, yeah, you can do it, mostly indie game developers, because that's who I have direct contact with. But if I could get direct contact with people from like larger games, like General Mills, I honestly think most of the time they'd be like, sure, that's fine, so long as you're not like trying to sell it or something, go ahead. That seems like a good middle ground to me. I don't know. I'm I'm open to people telling me that that's not the best way of going about things, but I think it's kind of the best that we're going to get for the moment. So along with that, here's kind of my ultimatum to everybody concerning my games. If you've purchased one of my games, you have my permission to copy that and distribute it amongst your friends however you wish as long as you'd like to. I just ask that you be nice and don't like upload it for other people to download as I am trying to make a living doing this, but I don't really have any plans to be going after anybody that does that. And if you're not gonna buy and play the game and that's the only way that you would play the game, I conveniently might just turn the other cheek and uh, not notice. That's about the most of it for right now. I'll let you guys know if I have any fun experiences reaching out to various developers of uh, different games or any cool successes or anything like that. But I appreciate you taking the time to listen, and if you like this sort of content that I'm doing, uh, feel free to tell me in the comments, uh, like the video, or subscribe. Um, I'm still figuring out whether I want to be doing YouTube more consistently or not, or whether that's going to kind of just take away from develop developing time. Um, yeah, anyway, thanks. Bye. See ya.